information system with a with an inbuilt electronic medical record uh, because we have uh, uh, 25 hospitals in the network with 13 in india and the rest overseas across eight countries uh, what uh, what we are attempting to do is that bring in a level of standardization of the his across clusters which could also be across a country uh, so that's a work in progress uh, currently uh, other than that uh, our for uh, radiology our pack systems the laboratory information systems uh, so these are the things which uh, which which derive a lot of uh, management uh, time in addition to that ai tools are being used uh, whether it's uh, chatbots uh, triaging uh, systems are uh, being looked at uh, we are also extensively using cloud for exchange of Im archiving information and exchanging information across systems uh, that's these are all uh, these are all uh, already there uh, at the back end uh, we are also uh, using um, oracle for example for hr that's a human resource management system and also for finance that's that's a work in progress something interesting about Astra is the creation of a new vertical for innovation which acts as an incubator for startups uh, which can collaborate with hospitals and also uh, uh, build in an ecosystem which will improve efficiency and perhaps um, in a way um, uh, enhance the patient experience uh, throughout the uh, throughout the hospital so that's that's uh, something which we are all excited about there's so much happening around the world and uh, uh, healthcare as we see today will not be the same uh, tomorrow. The current pandemic uh, which we are seeing around the world, COVID-19, uh, I would say the first in human history where we have already seen the positive impact of uh, many of these cutting edge technologies. For, for example, uh, there were uh, AI programs, algorithms uh, which could predict uh, so much in advance the, uh, the arrival of a pandemic. Exactly on December 30th, uh, one of the AI firms uh, could announce uh, that there is an evolving pandemic. This was uh, uh, about roughly nine days before the WHO or even the Chinese authority made any statement uh, regarding the same. So that's something very interesting. Uh, the amount of uh, ability for us, uh, there are companies uh, which have also used augmented uh, computing ability to pick up uh, the most effective drugs among the available formularies around the world to say that this is perhaps much more ap applicable in the treatment of COVID. So that is something interesting. The accelerated uh, and crushed timelines for bringing out the candidate vaccine, that's been quite interesting. Never in the history of mankind would uh, the first uh, success, hopefully the successful vaccine would come all due to the power of AI. Uh, so it's quite interesting. In a, in a non-COVID scenario, uh, we are using um, AI to uh, triage patients. If you have a, a, a robust electronic medical record, then you can uh, use your archived history, which is uh, stored in a, in a specific template and ICD code, uh, and you will be able to prog prognosticate based on the current uh, presenting history and uh, uh, symptoms. So I, I would say the, the differential diagnosis uh, thanks to AI would be much more accurate than otherwise. It is very difficult because of uh, the rapid changes taking place in medicine for one individual to uh, be the storehouse of available information around the world. So, um, you know, a direct access to the World Wide Web and having an intelligent system will augment the ability of a physician. And I would say that Many parts of the world which do not have uh, the benefit of physicians, this will also help to upgrade junior level staff um, in the clinical sphere, whether it could be doctors, could be nurses and also uh, paramedical staff. In the field of medical education, both augmented reality and virtual reality is something uh, um, which is an answer to uh, challenges which we face. In the traditional schools, like some of us who were trained, uh, we had a cadaver. Uh, for anatomy and that's how through dissection we learn the structure of the human body but with uh, virtual technology available you can do a virtual dissection you don't need to really uh, you, you don't need to dissect a life uh, uh, I mean, what I meant is you don't need to dissect a cadaver uh, so to speak you can virtually study the structure and the detailing of the human body and uh, play it around almost on a 3d formation so it's a very, very useful and uh, powerful tool in upgrading young uh, clinicians, for example, to, uh, to, 
uh, orient them to the challenges whether uh, the you know the the complex uh, dynamism in a critical care environment where things change uh, you can simulate all that in an intelligent simulator and put your clinicians uh, literally at the edge and see their response so that really helps them uh, in the surgical field uh, also you can use both virtual reality and augmented uh, reality to train surgeons um, whether it's minimally invasive surgery or other complex surgeries i think that's something useful um, phase 1 uh, sometime in early march uh, we already had an ai chatbot uh, which was introduced um, which was basically for a uh, uh, for ensuring uh, tri triaging of calls because many of the telephone exchanges and even clinicians were overwhelmed by queries from uh, lay citizens because naturally they were quite anxious due to exposure by the 24 hour news story so it really helped uh, to ease some of the nerves by telling them that this is perhaps their uh, doubts and queries regarding uh, covid uh, was much better answered using a chatbot uh, moving on to that we opened a 24 by 7 uh, a tele triage service which was manned by a qualified uh, clinician so uh, that really helped in terms of um, uh, uh, classifying the equity levels uh, understanding that should this uh, uh, should this patient be actually referred to a public center uh, so that really helped in the tele triaging process so it's kind of a uh, one step ahead of the fever clinics which all of us were mandated to uh, have so it really helped had a fantastic response uh, the next stage was um, the symptom tracker uh, that's also an ai based uh, symptom tracker which was uh, which was customized through a template based questionnaire and it it will give you uh, based on your uh, based on your degree of risk uh, whether you you have a travel history or a contact history and it puts you into specific zones and based on that we were able to alert public health authorities also based on relevant info and all the data is properly archived and also captured uh, it's uh, also enables the institution to monitor that specific uh, patient for almost 20 days so it was also something very interesting uh, the next uh, quantum leap mainly because of the lockdowns people could not have uh, access to the hospitals uh, across the five states in india where we operate so the aster e consult uh, platform was uh, very useful it enables the patient to have appointment scheduling there's a payment gateway system uh, you can get your specialist uh, video consultation uh, the text, uh, the uh, the consultation notes are archived and captured. You could have uh, the the tele prescriptions based on the case uh, could be managed. So uh, that was a quantum quantum leap which uh, converted an adversity into an opportunity. All of us in the health sector in the country, uh, we are so impressed with the proactive nature of the government of India and the various arms of the government. Uh, our uh, I would say hats off to the board of governors to roll out the telemedicine guidelines which uh, gave us so much of clarity and removed all the ambiguity which many people had uh, uh, concerns and genuine concerns about that. So it really helped us our e-consult uh, platforms uh, were in a collaborative nature where the, obviously the patient uh, has to fix an appointment there's a con explicit consent forms which talks about the limitation of the teleconsultation uh, then the documentation aspect of uh, teleconsultation the amount of uh, the, the prescription norms, everything is well defined. It's also HIPAA compliant. Um, uh, we also have to ensure that restricted drugs as per as per the uh, the law of the land that cannot be prescribed at uh, any any point in time. So the, the guidelines issued by the government was timely and really helped us to fast track uh, the rollout of teleconsultation services. We were uh, pleasantly surprised by uh, uh, the large percentage of adopt early adoption uh, in the in the states what where we operate whether it's state of Kerala, Karnataka, Andhra, Telangana, and Maharashtra. So it was quite fascinating. It is not a top down approach. It's a two way process where the patient uh, definitely has to uh, first uh, download the app whether from Google Store or from iOS. Uh, look at uh, the location which uh, you know which doctor which specialty which hospital if if that requirement is there uh, then fix the appointment uh, arrange for the teleconsult video consult at that time uh, take the opinion get a e prescription 
so it was quite uh, collaborative i would say uh, and uh, very useful for all the stakeholders concerned asters in the quest of building the portal called one aster it is agnostic to uh, the various hospital information systems and it enables the user uh, to uh, fix appointments to have access to uh, the uh, electronic medical records primarily discharge summaries diagnostic results whether it's blood chemistry or uh, your imaging results uh, so that way it is quite uh, useful it also uh, is the the uh, i would say it uh, rings the dots the various dots in the ecosystem so it's hospitals uh, the aster laboratory aster home care uh, aster tele health so everything is uh, integrated through one aster so that's one aspect the other back end application which i talked about before was uh, mainly the his is clearly integrated with uh, oracle finance which is a work in progress it's already integrated with uh, hrms so that's already there you know the joke which is out there that uh, the big push which has come for uh, tele health is not from the chief information officer all credit must be given to covid 19 Uh, and it's been across for all providers honestly that uh, everyone has jumped into the band uh, band back in people have tried to build their portals uh, the the advantage with asta was that uh, our chairman dr azad mopin has been talking about uh, asta's quest uh, for uh, digital health for almost past 24 months and uh, we were ahead of the curve in the sense to already have our own innovation uh, center based out of bangalore we have a medical scientist who's heading it uh, there is a mandate given already for uh, triaging uh, various startups who would like to work with aster and bring out cutting edge technologies into the field so that was already well established uh, many uh, many uh, technologies were already piloted with our clinicians and some of it are uh, already embedded embedded within our system so that's something uh, which i think is a differentiator Uh, in terms of our uh, use of the ai chatbot chatbot which helps uh, uh, which helps with the base of a template based questionnaire to triage uh, the symptom do a risk assessment of the patient and also continuously follow up with the patient for 20 days i thought that was something uh, unique and it helped us to share better information with the public authorities in terms of uh, you know the risk uh, the risk data about the patient so that way this is quite unique so uh, in summary i would say that uh, aster uh, at multiple levels and uh, across uh, across our ecosystem we are investing heavily into uh, digital technology because we really believe that uh, the future of healthcare is is uh, uh, is completely imbued with um, uh, with uh, the kind of uh, innovative solutions which will there and augment uh, our ability to serve uh, uh, our clients better and have better clinical outcomes for more updates from cxo tv please like and subscribe to our channel